All right, welcome to day two of NDI November. Special guest today, Paul Richards, the author of The Unofficial Guide to NDI. This book came out in the spring of 2021. We've got Paul on the show. Those of you who are familiar with our show might know Paul as the marketing guru of PTZ Optics and also uh, the Stream Beaks, one of the stars of that podcast. But today, Paul is here to tell us all about NDI, NDI Primer. What is NDI? It's future, it's applications. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Hey, Gary, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Awesome. Now, Paul, I think if we're going to start the show, we need to start with not actually NDI, but talking about IP video. What is IP video? So give us a little background on that before we get into NDI specifically. Yeah, IP stands for Internet Protocol, and essentially this is video flowing over a network. Uh, IP video has actually been around for quite some time, but it really wasn't until NDI that IP video became easy to use, easy to discover, easy to implement. And the folks at NewTek and Andrew Cross and everyone at NDI today has really made IP video accessible. So before we get to NDI, IP video itself has a lot of advantages. Uh, you can have a lot of video sources sent over your network. And sometimes working with traditional HDMI and SDI video, you generally have like a limited number of ports on your hardware. It can be expensive and it can be difficult to transport. And with IP video, we walk into this world of more bi-directional control. So not only are you sending video from a source to a destination, but you can control it from that destination and you can have send it back and forth. And it's really emerged I'd say over the past five to 10 years um, in video production and live streaming and broadcast. Uh, before that, IP video was, of course, very popular in security. But now that the quality and the, your abilities have increased, it's now being used all throughout video production and live streaming as well. Yeah, well, in the pro video space and in video production, it wasn't IP video that made it happen. It was really NDI, Dr. Cross's vision of a world where video could be transferred over transferred over any common network in a home or in a business or where have you, but that the NDI would not just be the video, but a whole lot more, like control of the PTZ cameras. Talk about NDI a little bit now specifically. Yeah, so NDI stands for Network Device Interface, and it's become, just like SDI, a standard in the industry. It allows you to very quickly discover any video source that's NDI compatible on your local area network. And while NDI was designed for local area networks, they've created a whole bunch of tools to get the most out of IP video. And as you dig into NDI, it's not just a standard, but it's an incredible tool set that NDI gives away for free to take IP video, something that is very complicated to use IP video. There's IP key addresses, there's firewalls, there's all kinds of complication, and give you the tools you need to have really kind of like a one-click setup integration where you can take video from your network and use it in a Zoom call with NDI webcam. You can take N uh, video from your network, and maybe it's a PTZ camera, and now you can view it and control it, the, the pan tilt zoom camera in NDI Studio. So as you learn about NDI, uh, the NDI tools and the NDI devices that support NDI become become kind of the connection points that make NDI so powerful. Now, I think initially when NDI started, you had NDI switchers like the TriCaster and also people like VizRT, Wirecast, and o uh, OBS picked up on it, as did others. And then there were PTZ cameras. That's you, really you guys, you know, were one of the first PTZ cameras to have NDI back in the day. And in fact, uh, I think you were the first NDI cameras that we carried. I think you even shipped before the folks at NewTek did. So kudos on that one. But now there's many more different NDI devices and softwares as well. We've got controllers, encoders. We've got dedicated recorders. We've got NDI working with the AV conferencing. So when I spoke to Dr. Cross, I think it was two years ago as the keynote speaker for NDI November, he said, you know, the adoption of the NDI technology just leaped five, left five years ahead, which was great. But now he said, it's up to me and the rest of the scientists to catch up and get the technology to leap forward as well so that, that we can keep up with the rate of adoption because the rate of adoption has just been insane. So let's start, though, from the beginning with PTZ cameras and why an NDI PTZ camera is superior to hooking your camera up with 
SDI, HMI, or USB? Yeah, so NDI was one of the first IP video protocols that really combined everything you needed in a PTZ camera into a single uh, oh. protocol. So with NDI, not only are you getting high quality video, but you're also getting PTZ control, right? Pan, tilt, zoom. You're also getting tally light control. You're also getting metadata. So it became the perfect replacement for, you know, SDI and HDMI. In fact, it's superior in many ways. So with a PTZ camera, now with power over Ethernet, NDI, you can have a single Ethernet cable powering your camera. You can send high quality video from that camera and you can control it on the far end. So it's got everything you need and it really has replaced, you know, what used to be an SDI cable, an analog RS-232 cable, a power cable. I mean, the cost savings when you are hiring electricians to put in power outlets for devices uh, is just significant to really reduce uh, the burden of installation and simplify and streamline everything with NDI. Yeah, I think one of the most important things to stress for NDI, because we're assuming a lot of people are going to be beginners watching this show because your book is for beginners as well as advanced users, is that you don't have to be all NDI. You can migrate to NDI little by little. Obviously, at the head end, you need your switcher, your mixing software, you know, to be NDI. But your cameras can be NDI, they can be SDI, they can be HDMI, USB. You can mix everything together. And one of the things I think is really cool is just as a segue, the latest generation of camcorders now really have all the interfaces you would want on the back. I mean, uh, PTZ cameras. Most PTZ cameras that are current models now have SDI, have HDMI, have USB, and they have a, a network jack that allows for uh, NDI as well. So it's not like you have to worry about which camera to get. All you really have to focus on is, you know, what throw, what what optics do I need? What one's got the best mechanics to get the one that fits your budget? You don't have to worry about connectivity as much as you did even a year ago. Yes, I agree. Uh, and then I think if we're going to talk about PTZ cameras, we need to talk about PTZ controllers. And this is a picture of probably my favorite controller in the world because it's under a thousand bucks. The the PTZ, your super joy. Every you have a whole range of PTZ controllers, but PTZ control over NDI really that that to me is just incredible because you know you can hook someone up who's going to be your PTZ operator. He can use NDI based multicam. We'll get into that a little better. And he doesn't even have to be in the room operating the cameras if you're tight on space, or he could be at the other side of the room or at a separate desk. If he's anywhere on the network, he could be controlling the cameras. Yeah, you know, building NDI directly into the SuperJoy is a big deal for um, joystick control. Now, obviously, because PTZ cameras are so easy to integrate with the single cable, the power over Ethernet, the NDI connectivity, and not to mention the integration with, as you said, OBS, the vMix, the Wirecast, the TriCaster, connecting all of these hardware, you know, cables is going by the wayside, but so increasing the amount of PTZ cameras needed uh, or available to these productions. And therefore, how do we control all of these things? So that's where the SuperJoy comes into play. And the, the SuperJoy obviously can control uh, any NDI camera. You can turn the SuperJoy on, search for every NDI camera or device on your network and pop it in directly to the um, SuperJoy and control it. You can view it out of the HDMI uh, output and it just takes control of your entire NDI ecosystem into a single dedicated controller where you can give that to a volunteer at a church or you can give it to a camera producer in a television station. You know, we're seeing these deployed all over the place to take control, not just of PTZ Optics cameras, but we support Sony, Panasonic, and through Sony Visca, pretty much every PTZ camera on the market. We even support security cameras with OnVIF, and uh, of course, any NDI camera as well. Now, of course, the other thing that's great about NDI is if you have just, say, one or two PTZ cameras, maybe you don't need a controller. Maybe it's just a few little moves, a few little motions, and some presets, and all of the current software and hardware that supports NDI mixing and switching also supports controlling your PTZ camera through NDI from that mixer or switcher. So you can get preset control, kind of what I'll call, you know, if you're in TriCast or Wirecast, basic control of, you know, your PTZ, or if you have multiple cameras that you really want to have a lot more 
finite and optimal control of than you get a PTZ controller, or you could actually have both going. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier that I think is important to talk about, in a properly configured NDI system, every NDI device can see each other, and when you put a new one in, everyone sees that a new one's there. And that's one of the things about NDI that I don't think people talk about enough, is it's so scalable and expandable, and it's so easy to increase what you're doing. So you get started in NDI in your studio, and it's so much easier to add new things into your workflow, into your production. And I don't think we talk about that expandability enough. I mean, we talk about NDI a lot, but I think that expandability while maintaining st stability and giving you all the features you need is really incredible. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think so many of us in the video production and live streaming industry, you know, the first question we ask now is, does it have NDI? Because, you know, if you've run out of HDMI ports, you've run out of SDI ports, you've slowly started to, to realize how easy it is to leverage your network. And oftentimes, you know, we're putting in 24, 48 port network switches and those switches have power over ethernet um, netgear is a great example they have a wonderful uh, networking infrastructure so as we transition from hardware-based kind of traditional HDMI and SDI to IP-based systems with networking equipment, we've just got a whole bunch more networking ports, right? And they're open. And so it's much easier than imp uh, upgrading our entire infrastructure. Most of, my co of our customers here have networks in place. And even if they don't have enough ports, we're talking about buying an affordable network switch you know, to, to bolt onto their existing networking system uh, to add an additional 10, 20, 30 ports. And it's really nice to see it uh, from a shareability perspective, with, you know, getting more people involved. You know, when you're tied to a single hardware video switcher, there's one person who knows how to use it, and that's it generally speaking. But when you've got NDI available at every single PC, when, you know, it makes that much easier for the, you know, the assistant producer, the assistant director, the trainee to get involved and then realize how easy it is. And those people, the new emerging, you know, generation of video producers are not going to understand the old way anymore because it's just become so much easier. And um, as you said, expands so much into uh, different places. And when you're talking about expandability and old ways, one of the things I think is important to know about NDI is you don't have to throw out any of your equipment. You can use an encoder to convert an existing camera into an NDI camera, and you can use a decoder to actually turn any television into an NDI monitor. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, encoders and decoders are an incredibly important piece of the NDI puzzle. Um, it, it basically, if you have any SDI or HDMI device and you want to bring it into an IP workflow, you can do so with an encoder. Um, and then if you want to send it, right now I'm looking at two different monitors uh, in front of me, and they are they're decoders. And they are, one of them is taking the video feed from this Microsoft Teams call on my screen over here, and the other one is taking another NDI feed and showing me a full screen preview of what I look like on the far end. So the cool thing about that is now that now that instead of having an hardwired HDMI connection to the TV, I now have an IP connected device. So I can just type in the IP address and change it right from any computer on my network. So nobody's going back there and unplugging and replugging anything. It's so much more flexible. So from a professional audio visual perspective, uh, from a service perspective, maintenance, everything is a lot more flexible. So spending a little time to learn how this stuff works is if you are dealing with this type of equipment and you're in this industry, it is a massive time saver for you. And and it provides more flexible solutions for your customers. And the other thing that I think is real important is in NDI work closes, it's gotten easier and better than ever before now is I can record any video that's on my NDI network. I can record it as the ISOs coming off, let's say, my TriCaster or my vMix. I can record it by actually running NDI Studio on a computer, which allows me to record any source. Then there's new devices like the Killaview Cube R1 that actually lets you record up to I believe 9 HD or 4 uh, 4K video signals at once to your, straight to your recorder. And then you can use those recordings to bring them into your NLE, your post-production, whatever it is you want to do for later. So, you know, it's really become a full system where 
everything from pre-production to post-production is, and the production itself can all be augmented with NDI. Introducing the KiloView Cube R1. With this device, you can capture up to nine channels of NDI in stunning 1080 60p or up to four channels in 4K. What sets the Cube R1 apart is its versatility, accommodating multiple formats of NDI, including full bandwidth NDI and NDI HX. Connectivity is made simple with the Cube R1. It's equipped with two high-speed 10 gig SFP Plus ports. KiloView has made their own storage modules that have been tested and approved for use with the Cube R1, available now. Plus, the Cube R1 offers compression options in formats like H.264 and H.265. Get your KiloView Cube R1 today at videoguys.com. Yeah, that's a really cool system. It's really interesting and exciting to watch these ecosystems grow because, as you said, the hardware manufacturers are catching up, and we are many, many years into this now, so the ecosystem is very strong. And then, Paul, we'll flash back a little to, I think it's 2018. No one's worried about a pandemic or anything. You're telling me about this really cool company with really cool technology that's going to let you get NDI and other stuff at the conference rooms down the road and that I should be looking into it. And I dropped the ball a little bit, but talk about now how NDI is now fully integrated into Zoom, Skype, Teams, you name it. The AV conferencing world and NDI have completely converged. Yeah, it's great to see this happening because, you know, not only are more people using video conferencing than ever before, but because of that, the quality of our video meetings and our webinars and our town halls are, you know, expected to be at a certain level. And in many cases, live streaming and video production uh, systems are being used to send video directly into a Zoom webinar or a Microsoft Teams meeting. Um, and there's a couple things here. One, NDI provides a tool called NDI Web cam which is totally free and it will take your ndi video sources and allow them to be selected as a webcam in microsoft teams in zoom in skype and the list goes on um and then to that to my earlier point you know in these live streams and these webinars these zoom events right these virtual events that are happening you know i'm hosting one next month um you know we want the quality of the video experience to be good we want to bring in comments from social media we want to do all of these things it really ndi really opens up the door to those more professional video media Meetings with multiple cameras and the things that you, you'd want to do that maybe Zoom wasn't made for originally. Now you can you know bring in that whole NDI ecosystem into these traditional video communication applications. Yeah, I think we've all had death via Zoom over the years. And I think one of the things that blending NDI with video production and Zoom and Teams on the AV side is you can create a more interesting thing for people to watch, to view, to participate in. In fact, we're using Teams today to bring you into our TriCaster as part of the program that we're running now. And it's being used in a lot of different ways. And I think, let's just talk about this. I say NDI is everywhere, but let's bring up this graphic. You know, you can use NDI everywhere in anything. Houses of worship, event stream, broadcast, business, education, sports, esports, government, healthcare, radio, DJ music production. Paul, when we first started talking about NDI, did you ever think it would get this far this fast? It's really incredible. And of course, there was a massive acceleration over the past couple of years. And I do believe that NDI took the, the right approach of giving every single NDI tool away for free. So we're talking about millions of video pros using this software in every vertical, testing it out, seeing it that it works, trying it a little more, creating a standard around it. And now, as I said, you know, the first thing a lot of more modern video production people are asking is, does it have NDI? Because they've already built an ecosystem around it. It does work. It's proven. And um, they're ready to expand on that flexibility, as you said, um, you know, at, really at a standard there. Yeah. Now we're talking about NDI as a standard and that NDI is out there. And over the past few years, you know, NDI, like I said, the adoption grew dramatically during uh, COVID. But the other thing that happened was a lot of people started claiming they had NDI and they really had kind of what I'm going to call faux or partial NDI. They had a little bit of NDI working, but they weren't true NDI products. And I feel along the way, maybe the NDI spec got a little uh, watered down and things were saying they were NDI that they weren't. But last year, the folks over at NDI VizRT came out with a new standard, NDI HX3, that I think really reset the bar, you know, who's doing NDI right and who's just kind of 
faking their way or pretending or not keeping up with the standards. So let's talk about NDI HX3, full NDI, and why those are really the two standards that people should be focusing on now going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's probably a good idea to bring up this chart. We can go yeah. through it together. There, there, there's two different versions here. So we've got NDI high bandwidth, and then we have NDI high efficiency, right? The HX stands for high efficiency. And so, you know, the high bandwidth is almost lossless quality, whereas the HX3 it has really no visible compression artifacting. So in most cases for a business, for a house of worship, for anything that is like below television broadcast quality, NDI HX provides this incredible uh, bandwidth savings. So with most of our customers, even today, Gary, they're working on a gigabit networking setup. And a gigabit is a thousand megabits, right? And an HX3 video source here, we're looking at about 60 megabits per second, right? 50 to, 50 to 100. So you can do... 10 to 20 NDI HX3 video sources. On the high bandwidth side, we're looking at 150 to 250 megabits per second. You can really only do two or three high bandwidth NDI setups on a gigabit network. Now, the good news is, is a lot of, you know, really this is a bandwidth and quality conversation that we're having here. The good news is that on the bandwidth side, a lot of people are putting in uh, 10, 5 gigabit, 10 gigabit. I think there might even be 50 gigabit network infrastructures and backbones that can allow you to do a great variety and a large mix of high efficiency and, and high bandwidth NDI. So that's why I wrote the book because there, you know, you do want to kind of think about that as you start to expand your use of NDI tools and you're sending video here and there, it's good to, you know, have a Google sheet or a table of some kind where you're calculating. Cause the first thing that if as a power user, you're going to bump into is, is bandwidth. You're going to go, why is my computer not able to take 20 of these video sources? And the reason why is because you're running out of bandwidth likely. And let, let's go that a little further. We have H.264, which we're all used to. That's pretty much what YouTube, Facebook, you know, twi Twitter, uh, 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 what's it called? The, the kids love TikTok. It's mainly all H.264. But the real cool technology that's coming on fast is H.265, which really gets, you know, twice the video quality for the same bandwidth or half the bandwidth for the same video quality. Either way, it's like doubling your pipe. And that's really excited that that's in HX3. But what comes with the ability to have these compressed signals is it puts a little more pressure. Something's got to be decoding and encoding it somewhere. So that's where you need, you know, a bigger, faster computer at the front or better, stronger chips in your camera or what have you. So it's a trade-off for bandwidth, but there's also a processing power component of that. But the good news is, is you can now mix together both in the current world we're at. Whereas when me and you were getting started with this, you kind of had to made a choice in the beginning. And sometimes that had you going down a path that wasn't as flexible as you thought it was going to be. In the world today in 2023, it doesn't matter what you selected. In fact, just as I was talking about the connectivity on the cameras for the most part are all, have them all, pretty much everything coming out now supports full NDI, HX3, 264, and 265. So everything's converging into just use the best version of it that you need, but everything supports whatever your workflow can take on. So we're excited about that. Let's switch gears a little bit from hardware and compressions now to the suite of software tools that are out there, because you mentioned it earlier, and that is that NDI tools, now these are the NDI tools that come from NDI. Also, companies like PTZ Optics are putting their own NDI applications and things out there to get stuff to work together and things like that. So they have a whole host of tools that are available for free from NDI.video, I believe is the website, correct? Yeah, NDI.video. But I want to go into some of the tools that I love the best and have you talk about them. And I, I think you share my thoughts on this. The first one, I love these NDI HX cameras. I don't think this gets enough credit for people to do, but you can take any current Android or iPhone and turn it into a camera to then bring that signal in over your wireless network into your mixer via the, the, the HX camera app. And I don't, I think people forget about that app a lot. And I think it's something that I want to remind people of because sometimes you just want that extra camera. Maybe you want to put it on the podium. Or what I love is when you're at a sporting event, you can have someone running it and you can get like the audience, the spectator view of what's going on in the spectator view of the crowd or stuff like that. So I know you're a camera company, so turning a phone into a camera isn't necessarily a great thing, but I just love this app. 
Oh, I like it too. I, I do use it uh, fairly regularly. It, it just expands what you're capable of. Uh, you are getting into wireless connectivity at this point. And, you know, again, I, I do I do discuss that in the book, by the way, of, uh, you know, expanding your network into the wireless world. And you need to know what you're doing a little bit. You need to probably have your multicast set up properly and have your router set up, your wireless router and, and wireless access points. But it's a great app and I haven't had a whole lot of trouble with it, honestly. The only issue that I do have with it is it sends audio with it. So yeah. if you're in the same room as the other microphones that you're going to get an audio uh, loop. Uh, uh, now, if you're sending it to another place, like I've yeah. seen people using this as a crowd cam out in the middle of the stadium or something, then you want that audio. So it, it's a great app. Yeah, and in fact, I know a lot of people, but one of my tech tips with that is always duck the audio on that as your source so that you don't have it come in because when it does come in, it's going to confuse everything. You might get feedback loops. You might get noise. It's not always a good thing. The next one I want to talk about is something that I know you use all the time. I think you're using it right now, which is NDI Studio Monitor. Yeah, I'm using NDI Studio Monitor right now with NDI Bridge, um, and I'm connecting to a um, camera that's on the on, far away from me and in, in another location. But NDI Studio Monitor is amazing. It, it allows you to right-click it, view every single source on your network. Uh, you have the ability to... Um, to actually control this remotely. That's another thing a lot of people don't realize is that you can control um, NDI Studio Monitor for, with an IP address from anywhere in the world. So those that's great. It's got PTZ control. Um, you can record video sources directly through it. And uh, it's the staple right there. The thing about NDI is very low latency. So these tools work seamlessly in almost any professional audiovisual workflow. Cool. Let's talk about NDI screen capture as well. Yeah, NDI Screen Capture, and there's a new one that's uh, Screen Capture HX available yep. as well, and you can just run that on a computer. I see this used a lot in eSports where... Now, NDI Screen Capture, by the way, can be used to capture a screen and a webcam. So I do think they were really thinking eSports when they when they released this. And so guess grab what? The screen. I'm using it right now! <laughs> that's right, what yeah. we use to take our uh, PowerPoints into our presentations for our shows. Yep, I, I, that's exactly what I use too. And I, so many houses of worship uh, are using it as well, where the, the PowerPoint for the pastor, you know, he's going through his PowerPoint and it, it's very far away from the live streaming computer yep. in the back of the room. So they send it. Uh, it was a huge aha moment for a lot of people when they learn how to use this tool. Yeah, it, it's tremendous. You can put ProPresenter on a laptop too, and now it all feeds into everything also. Next. We talked about it a little bit, NDI uh, webcam, and I think it's important to talk about because basically it means any NDI source on your network can be fed into your Zoom or your Teams. Have I simplified it enough? Yeah, I mean, I think the big, and yes, and the big improvement is that they can bring in four video sources. Um, so you can have four NDI webcams connected to Zoom, um, and that is a pretty big deal. Um, you can also switch between them. So it's, a, it's great for bringing in those video sources. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned it. I think four is the number. I think if you, if you have that meeting with four or less people, you're on Zoom or Teams, it's a productive meeting. I think once you get above four, you get into the nines and the twelves. I just, I, my eyes glass over at this point. You know, when I had to do it, I did it. But I still think, you know, four is my magic number. But you can also, in what we're talking about, pick any four people you want out of more people when you're using other NDI products altogether in a workflow. Now I want to pick your brain a little bit, Mr. NDI, because not only do you know a lot about NDI, you know a lot about other stuff that's out there and you know about srt which is which has been integrated into your cameras for i think over a year or two now at this point and there's a new it's an old name that people in the audio world know really well but it's kind of new to us video geeks and that's dante and dante AV. now you guys have actually come out with ptt cameras your link family that has dante in it but I really want to pick your brain to help people in the beginners. Remember, today's show is really about people in the beginners. You know, what the heck is the difference? What's Dante AV and what the, what's the difference between that and NDI? I, I'm going to you. You're probably the first guy I know who can actually answer this question in English we can all understand. Yeah, you, you know, this is a question that, you know, a lot of us are, are it's not a humongous question. It's more of just a, a statement really here. I, but I do think there's going to be lots of people thinking about this because Dante has just released 
uh, their video, you know, in the past year. And then NDI has also, uh, <laughs> these are competitors here, right? And NDI has also released a lot of great audio tools. And NDI, from a video perspective, has been around much longer. Um, but Dante in the audio world has been around much longer. So Dante has got 20,000 certified professionals who have been trained. They have an incredible training system. They've got thousands of manufacturers and, and they, they're being used all over pro AV in audio. Uh, we're talking about stadiums, different, uh, audio, it's, it's the audio IP standard and their video solutions have just come out. So their video tools are less than what NDI has today, they, but they have a much more robust audio system. So depending on the ecosystem that the customers already invested in, and you know, it's basically, you know, one or the other here, NDI will have stronger video tools and stronger integrations, uh, quite honestly, in the video world where Dante has a stronger audio, you know, background and audio integrations in, in that space. So, Paul, basically, if you've got Dante in your system, your church, your school, your auditorium, and you know how it works, Dante AV may be an easier path for you than NDI. But if you're starting without anything in there and you're coming from a baseband world and video is your priority, NDI is still the way to go. And between you and I, you know how these things go. At some point, they're going to converge together once the two powers work out, however they're going to pay each other or whatever. But for now, they're separate. I'm not going to say equal because yeah. I really think on the video side and, and the use and the proven, you know, NDI is way ahead of Dante right now. But what Dante's got is that install base and the people who resell Dante are real experts and they know it. So I think they're going to be able to catch up. Now let's talk about another technology. These two don't compete with each other. They actually complement each other. That's SRT and NDI. Yeah, so SRT being open source, NDI being royalty free. So NDI is not open source. Um, sometimes when things are open source, they uh, get used for a lot of different reasons, but NDI is royalty free, meaning if you're a software developer, you can put it directly into your system. SRT was created by High Vision, okay, and it was created before NDI, okay, so it's been around for a long time. But because of the royalty-free nature of NDI and the business model behind it, NDI really has grown and surpassed SRT. And I, I did see some statistics when I was at uh, IBC recently. And NDI has become really the, the video standard over there. SRT is great for sending video over the wide area network, right? So not really designed for sending video on the local area network, which is what most studios and productions are using today um, and where most people get started, right? Where are you getting started with IP video? In the space that you're at. SRT was designed to send it from somewhere on the other side of the world back to you. So it's used in a lot of professional scenarios, uh, but they are somewhat different, Gary. Yeah, I, I meant they complement each other. And what I meant by that is if you've got NDI going in your studio and you need to bring in a person remotely, SRT is a great way to do it. If I want to send my studio, some of my cameras, to another studio that let's say is in Los Angeles, I'm in New York, SRT is a good way to do that. You had mentioned that you're using Bridge. Once again, these worlds are colliding. The difference is, is a lot of times when this world collides, there are workflows that incorporate both together at doing what each one does best, as opposed to when we're talking about not Dante versus NDI, where it's really a choice of either or. The other thing that I think is very cool about SRT that I want to mention and NDI is they really both are kind of subsets of the big kahuna that's coming, which is SMPTE 2110, which is really the broadcast level of NDI. Now, I'm not saying broadcasters aren't using NDI. You and I both know they are in many ways that go beyond what I think anyone expected them to be using it for. But IP as a standard, that's when a studio is going to invest $10 million in a technology, they want to know it's a standard that no matter where they invest it, it's going to operate and be exactly the same everywhere. And that's the difference between NDI becoming a de facto standard because it's so popular or something being open source like SRT or OBS versus a true standards committee getting behind it where it's you, you must adhere to those standards to even call it 2110. But I'm really excited about that. And if you could talk about 2110 a little bit because we all know that a lot of people with NDI are going to grow up to 2110 at some point. So there's a lot of people with 2110 things that are going to say, you know, I could do the same thing for a lot less money and a lot less cost, a lot less headache as an NDI portion of a 2110 workflow. 
Yeah, 2110 was a big deal at NAB New York. And I definitely I agree. saw um, Panasonic. And I, I think I think I saw Black Magic has a new uh, SMPTE 2110 card. So some of the really big players in the industry yeah. are are seeing the future here. It is definitely on the high end, as, as you said. Um, it, this is not an entry level system by any means. Um, but I, I agree. I, I think this is a really good thing for the overall industry. And I think it's something to keep, keep, our, keep our eye on. Uh, the quality is incredible. I got a chance to look at it. Uh, it definitely is, you know, we're almost splitting hairs here, Gary, in some ways where we're looking at NDIHX and then we're looking at NDI full bandwidth and then we're looking at SMPTE 2110 and you really got to take a magnifying glass to see the difference, in my opinion, in some cases. But I agree with you that this is a television broadcast level production standard that is, you know, really got, you know, some steam behind it and it's going to it's going to be used by the top tier broadcasters. And one of the things I want to comment on that, because we're talking about broadcast. So NDI, I agree, one or two streams side by side, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. But when you're a broadcaster trying to integrate, you know, 112 inputs into 47 outputs into 32 different, you know, networks, it becomes a little bit different how stuff holds up. And when you start comparing then, it becomes, that's where you really start to see the difference as your, your whole workflow becomes incredibly more complex and broadcast. That's where you do start to see some differences in how it operates. But, you know, I was having a conversation with a lot of people when I was on the floor at, uh, and, uh, at uh, NAB New York. And I really think the 2110 is going to mimic NDI in a lot of ways by the adoption. And what I mean by that is before COVID, people were dipping their toe in the water with NDI, you know, saying, okay, I'm going to try it for this. Let's see how it goes. If it works for this, I'll do it. They were using converters. They were still using baseband. So even if you had something like a TriCaster or a vMix, you were still using Blackmagic cards for HDMI or SDI inputs. It wasn't, let's throw all the baseband out. Let's go completely to NDI. But now people are realizing I could save a fortune, be more efficient, more scalable, yada, yada, yada with NDI. And I think that's what's going to happen with 2110. But I really feel that the people who think that the world's just going to throw everything that they have that exists away and go to a 2110 world, I don't think it's going to happen as fast as people think. I think it's going to be a lot of NDI and 2110 with baseband as we kind of, the industry transforms itself on the broadcast level. It's going to be a big transformation from a wired world of SDI cables to a wired world of network cables running 2110. But I do think NDI is still going to be a big deal because I think in even those broadcast areas, like I said, say you want to set up a green room or a camera like in the bullpen to do some interviews and stuff like that. Sometimes it's easy to just throw a little NDI system together that feeds the bigger network than trying to expand your network out. But when you look at 2110, I'll ask you, you know, you guys make cameras, your leaders, you've added Dante, you know, where along your projected timeline, you know, do you see 2110 coming into play, you know, with your cameras? Do you think that's something that your camera is going to stay on that prosumer level and you might not even get involved in? I, you know, Gary, I always get in trouble uh, with you and you answer these questions. Uh, I will say that that we're looking at that for sure. And uh, our engineers are talking about it. They're working on something. But I don't want to get in any trouble, Gary. I, you know, I, I we added SRT. You know, we snuck that in. You know, we added everything on the list that we talked about today. We have integrated um, except for SMPTE 2110. So you could guess, you could pick a pretty good guess that it's on our, our roadmap. Cool. So now let's talk about something that's not going to get you into trouble, that really uses all the current technology of your current products and NDI. But as we talked about, NDI was originally started to be like within your own facility, within your, in, your own studio. But as NDI adoption grows so fast during the pandemic, the scientists said, hey, let's push these beyond the boundaries of a single space. Can we push this to be the whole world. Now, some people think of the whole world as being cloud. Some people think of it as remote production, Remy. I like to think about it as it's just where people are in one place, operating and working with gear in another place. And how we get there is a lot of different technologies. But the key thing is, is we're going to be in a future where any place that is a camera, any place that is a mixer, we're going to be able to have them talk to each other through remote workflows, through cloud, through other things. So talk about this whole trend of future trends, NDI, Remy, NDI Bridge, and even, you know, cloud a little bit. 
Yeah, I mean, this is an inevitable. I mean, this is the holy grail of what this was all built for. You know, we've been saying, hey, let's move to IP for a host of reasons. This is one big one that's finally being realized. Um, in fact, the NDI bridge, I'm running it right now, and I'm I'm able to use an NDI compatible uh, SuperJoy with an NDI camera on the far end, and I can connect those two together seamlessly. And it's so easy. It's such a simple, logical step from, you know, working in IP video. And as you said, Gary, even connecting traditional hardware that customers have already invested into IP video and then giving them the ability to control it all remotely. So if you can control it on your local area network, you can control it over the wide area network. Using NDI Bridge is one way. Um, you know, there's a lot of different tools. The cloud is known for doing what? Reducing costs, giving customers the ability to do things anytime, anywhere. And that is going to be amazing for this entire ecosystem where we go from, you know, building upon the foundations of what NDI was to now expanding the horizons to what customers are only dreaming of today. So in theory, in the near future, in an NDI IP world, any camera that's connected via NDI to a network that can get out on the web and any mixer that's connected via NDI and IP to the web, and any computer that's running some form of NDI tools and IP and connected to the web should be able to find, see, or invite each other to be able to create where, hey, you've got a PTZ camera down in, I've got one here, you've got one there, another guy's got one in Philadelphia, someone's got one in St. Louis, someone's got one in London. We should be able to not only see each other's PTZ cameras, but I could actually take control of your camera. You can take control of mine. I could have my camera feeding your mixer, or your mixer controlling my camera, putting graphics on it. And it's just going to break down so many barriers, but it's also going to mean we don't have to have extra costs anymore. All of a sudden, I don't need a complete studio everywhere that I want to produce video. I need components that work with other components where people are to produce video. And we've done some shows where we've had our uh, tech guru, Glenn, down in Texas, controlling our TriCaster here while controlling cameras somewhere else producing a show. And, you know, latency and delays happen when you do that. But as long as everyone knows it's going on, you can really do a really great job. And what I'm going to add is, is I see a lot of the networks doing stuff where people are remote that don't look so great. How is it that our world of NDI can do such a better production than the networks can. And we know the answer to that. They don't have 2110 yet, but they will. But I just think it's just amazing where we are and where we're about to take off is just so exciting. So I hogged the time a little bit. I know I want to thank you for being on the show. This was a phenomenal show and you did a phenomenal job. But I always like to end the shows giving my esteemed colleagues and guests the last word. So Paul Richards, your last word on NDI November, PTZ Optics, Stream Geeks, what's going on in your life, whatever you want to do, the floor is yours, my friend. Well, I'm we're, we're, we're heads down working on some of these things that we're talking about today. So look for a really exciting announcement from us at CES the, the first week in January. We're hosting the Stream Geek Summit in December, where we're going to be teasing some of this stuff and having a lot of great guests and talking about NDI. So check us out uh, at PTZ Optics and at Stream Geeks. And uh, it's an exciting industry to be a part of. We just got back from NAB New York. Uh, there's a lot of exciting careers, a lot of exciting projects a lot of exciting people in this industry so follow along and be part of it and we'd love to hear from you and, and paul your book is available online i believe we're going to be giving away some copies again this year as part of our contest it's a great little book to learn about everything you need to know about uh ndi the official guide to ndi so i want to thank everyone for being on the show paul i want to thank you you did a great job ndi november we're going to run the bump and tell you about all the shows that are coming all the all the free giveaways we're doing and all the other great stuff that's happening on ndi november paul richards thank you very much great show thanks gary